Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing on today? I pray that all is well with you and your family. So today I will be wrapping up the series on the five ways the enemy gets in. So this is coming from my book, Expose It. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, make sure you uh, DM me, message me, email me. My email is on uh, Facebook as well. You know, you can get in touch with me if you would like to get, get this book, Expose It, or any one of my other books, or you can go to my website, footprintenterprisesllc.com. So we were talking about the enemy. Who was the enemy? Satan, right? Satan, Lucifer, the deceiver, the wicked one, the accuser of the brethren. We can be so quick to get angry with others and turn our backs on them. We have every right to do that. But the one that we should be mad at is our enemy, the enemy that we cannot see or those things that we have not dealt with yet that are going on on the inside of us. We all have an enemy. He does not care about our age, our ethnic background, our financial status, our family, the family we come from, he does not care. He will use anyone, especially those that are closest to us. Why? Because they know us and they know our past. They like to throw it in our face. They can push our buttons. So today, make up your mind to not allow the enemy to use those around you to get you out of character and do those things that are not pleasing to God. He will try to steal our very life from the time of our mother's womb, especially when we are young or small. That's the perfect time when he tries to get in as a child. You know, you don't have anyone to uh, defend for you. You may be left alone to yourself or had been left alone to yourself when you were growing up and the enemy looked at you and you were the perfect target for him to plant that seed, to plant that seed of doubt, to plant that seed of fear, to plant that seed of lack of trust, uh, to plant that seed of betrayal. When we we're very young, we're very susceptible, and he knows that. He knows exactly what he is doing. His job is to get to as many children as he can, as many adults, pull them away from the kingdom. Uh, you know, today you may know someone, there are so many people that are just going through life, don't know their purpose, don't know who they are, their true identity, don't know what God has called them to do. They're just walking around lifeless, hopeless. And that's a sad place to be. And it's up to you and I, the body of Christ, to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Every opportunity that you get, let someone know that God loves you. He has a purpose for your life. It may not look like it right now, but I just love how God uses the scripture in Romans 8, 28. That scripture right there, when God will turn everything around in our life and use it for his glory. He likes it when we are a mess, really. Why? So he can clean us up and he gets all of the glory. So the enemy, he sits back and watches us. He schemes and plans and waiting for us to open up doors for him to come in. So this series has been about the five ways the enemy gets in and how we are to guard our gates. He doesn't use anything new. 
He knows all of our past sin, our mistakes, our hangups. And that's how he gets us. He keeps tripping us up over the same things over and over again. He may disguise it a different way. But the devil is ready, willing, and able to come right in and he will seize every opportunity. So don't worry about the man of those that are in the flesh. Worry about your true enemy and what he can do to you and how he can get a foothold in your life and it turns into a stronghold and you're bound by it and it takes time or it's a struggle for you to get him out of your life. That's why we have to be careful about the things that we do and digest. So we looked at the eyes, the nose, the ears, and touch our feelings. So be careful about the things that you are looking at, what you are watching on TV, uh, the movies that you watch. Uh, just be careful with your nose, the things that you are smelling. When you're going in different areas, arenas, you can smell something foul. And you stay there. You know, you get that internal check. Something's not right. All right. So be mindful. Mind your business. All right. We all have things that we need to be working on in our lives. Be mindful of the things you are listening to. Okay. The music, uh, the music, concerts, just be mindful. Whatever we are listening to or watching, eating, whatever, it should be glorifying our Father. Will God be pleased with me doing this? Be mindful of the things that um, you touch or allow to touch you, not even just physically, but emotionally, okay? Because we can be so quick to get offended and it really takes us for a loop. Be on guard, all right? Guard your heart, guard your gates. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Have you been guilty of this? I know I have. You know, we make plans about we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it doesn't go the way we planned or expected it to go. We didn't even put it up before the father and ask him, father, is this in your will? for my life at this season in my life. And then there are times when it doesn't go right and we keep pursuing it and pursuing it and pushing it and going forward, right? Bumping our head up against the wall. But then you know what? God will say, okay, they want to go that way. Go right ahead. And then when we get there, it's not what we thought it was going to be. And then we, what? Pray to God, oh, God, hurry up and get me out of this. Get me out of this. But no, you wanted it. We wanted it. We pushed it, pursued it, and it didn't go the way that we wanted it. So when it first stopped, we got to say, okay, well, maybe, just maybe, this is not the way God wants me to go right now. All right, be mindful, be mindful. Psalm 139, 23, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Is that your prayer on today? You want God to really search your heart? You know, we all want to be uh, pleasing and do things that will honor our father. Ask him, father, search my heart. Whatever is in me, father, that is not of you. Bring it to my attention so I can take care of it, Lord. Yes, I know we may repent every day. Uh, you know, forgive me for those sins I have done knowingly and unknowingly. But Father, when you bring it to my attention, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to confess it. Yes, confess that thing so the enemy knows I'm not playing. I'm going to confess this thing openly with my mouth. Let my Father know I'm serious. Not unknowingly, but what is it, Father? What is that thing, Lord, that I need to get rid of in my life? Seek Father. He will bring it to your attention. 
Psalm 51 10 created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yes, Lord, that was David's prayer, right? David wanted God to create in him a clean heart, recreate a new heart in him. If you are saved, we have a new heart. But there are times that sometimes things seep into our heart that we may not be aware of. And if someone brings it to your attention, don't just push it away. Think about it. Just say, okay, thank you. You know, thank you for your feedback. I'll pray about it. I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. But don't say, you know, oh no, that's not me. Why did they say that? I mean, like, really, why did they say that? But Father, create in me a clean heart. That's my desire on today. Show me those things. Help me to search my heart. And Father will help you to search your heart. It's like, what are your motives? You know, I do what I do because there is a word in my belly about exposing your truth. I want women to know you do not have to stay there. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about them. God has greater for you. God wants to restore your soul. He wants to renew your strength in him. He wants to uh, blow on you a fresh wind and make you renewed in him. That's what I desire. God's will for your life. Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. I think about a little child, you know, a child is going to say what's on their mind. There's no such thing as keeping secrets or being quiet, except for, you know, when they have been tampered with or hurt or bullied. In those cases, they may be quiet. But they usually say what's on their mind. They usually say they hold nothing back. But keep your heart with all diligence. And if you just happen to say something or something slips, ask yourself, why did I say that? Is there more to it than just, oops, I didn't mean to say that? So just check your heart, keep your heart with all diligence. And if something comes up, handle it. Don't run from it. We must face those things, right? Face it, confront it, speak it, forgive it, expose it. Expose it. Expose the enemy. We are all get atable by the enemy and no one is exempt. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. If you haven't gotten the answer, wait on the Lord. There's something that you are seeking him for. Wait on the Lord. How will you know that it's okay to move forward? You will have peace in your heart. You will not doubt. You won't have any anxiety or fear associated with it, whatever it is. There will be peace in your heart. And God will direct our paths. He desires to strengthen our hearts and strengthen our walk in him. And the only way to strengthen our walk in him is to get in his word. There is no getting around it. We must digest, right? Consume the word of God. Apply it to our lives and thank God for transforming our lives. So I hope you have enjoyed the five ways that the enemy gets in. You be of good courage. Do those things that are pleasing to your father and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.